Welcome. If you're new, if you're watching online, it's great to have you with us uh, tonight. Uh, my name is Matt. I'm on the team here at St. Nick's. It's great to have you in the building, and um, it's great to be here over August. Sometimes I sort of forget how cool August is. It's sort of, it, it's the month where people are sort of moving around the city, new people are coming, visitors are here. Uh, so if you are visiting uh, tonight, you are really, really welcome. If you're checking out churches in Bristol, you're really, really welcome. We'd love uh, to get to know you. Uh, so do stick around after church, meet some people, uh, get plugged in with the city, get plugged in with the church. Uh, whether that's this one or another one, um, any church uh, are great. They're all great. They're all great. But this one's, this one's good as well. Uh, <laughs> if this one's not for you. Um, anyway, let's get on with tonight's talk. This is not an advert for church. Um, tonight's talk is continuing this series that we're doing over the four Sundays in August. And we've called this series Character matters, character matters. And we've been looking at these sort of small section of uh, the book of Exodus in chapter 34, where Moses asks God to tell him his name and to tell Moses what he's like. Uh, because Moses uh, was desperate to know about the God that he worshipped so that he could tell the people of God about who God was, what God is like. So we've called this series Character Matters. And we've looked, uh, for the last two weeks, we looked at uh, two different uh, aspects of God that he calls himself. Firstly, that he is gracious, that was two weeks ago, and then compassionate. And Hannah and Josh have, have unpacked those over the last two weeks. Do check those out. And the third one we come to today is this description, how God calls himself. He says, I am slow to anger, slow to anger. This is the third thing that God says about himself. So tonight we're thinking about anger. <laughs> You might have thought, I'm not expecting to hear about anger at church tonight. But we're going to explore this tonight. Firstly, looking at why God says about himself that he is slow to anger. And then what we can learn about that for ourselves in our own lives and existence about our anger that we feel. Anger that we may have experienced in the past. Anger that we might be going through right now because of something that's happening to us or potentially anger um, in the future. Now, just as a little sort of icebreaker, I don't know what gets you angry, because um, there are small things in life that get us angry, and there are obviously large things out of our control that also get us angry in life. And I, I was sort of thinking about what gets me angry. Do you want to hear what they are? If, if these resonate with you, and these get you angry, please respond, okay? Um, things that get me angry. Drivers that don't use their indicators. Oh. Yes, come on, come on, here we go, okay. You can, get, you can release your anger if you want with me tonight. Uh, when someone finishes a loo roll, then doesn't replace it. Oh, yeah, that gets me angry. Gets you angry too. Uh, when you break something, you're sort of holding something, and then you clumsily drop it, and you break it, you realize you shouldn't have dropped it, and then it's broken. You just get frustrated with yourself. That makes me angry. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're not as clumsy as me. Um, this one's good. People who use their phone on speakerphone in public, like on the train. What are you doing? I don't need to hear your conversation. Yeah, that gets me angry. Uh, similarly, on the phone thing, this, uh, maybe phones just get me angry in general. Uh, people who check their phone in the cinema with like the brightness on full, and you're like, you're looking at, oh, just don't do it. What are you doing? Because <sighs> see, I'm, maybe this talk's right for me tonight. Um, and then lastly, this for you, uh, if you were here last week. Um, I was uh, falsely accused by a colleague, or just accused by a colleague, for uh, not owning any barbecue tools. And I was accused for not being a real man for not owning any barbecue tools. That got me really angry last week. No, 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 didn't really, didn't really. Um, anyway, just joking aside and uh, sort of icebreakers aside, anger is part of being human. We all experience anger. We all feel anger at some point in our lives. And whether you're someone that uh, maybe feels that regularly, feels anger regularly, whether you feel anger strongly, um, you need to know tonight it's a natural emotion. It's part of being human. All of us in our lives will experience anger for different reasons uh, and experience it strongly or frequently at different times in our lives. So if you get angry and you know that you get angry, maybe tonight there are some thoughts that I have tonight that will help you, maybe reassure you. And if you're maybe someone who says, do you know what, I don't feel like I do get angry, I'm quite chilled. Maybe tonight this will get you thinking about something to get angry about. Ooh. So tonight we're looking at God's anger, saying, and God's description of himself saying, I'm slow to anger. And then we're going to think, 
a bit later on about our own anger. So this passage from Exodus 34, then, let's look at it again. It says this. This is Exodus 34. It's going to come up on the screen. Verses 5 to 7. It says this. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him. That's Moses. And proclaimed his name, the Lord. That's Yahweh in, in Hebrew. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. And you might be sat here tonight in church, maybe for the first time in a long time, maybe the first time ever, and you say, do you know what, when I think of God, and especially when I think of the God of the Old Testament, I'd say he's mostly angry. He's uh, striking people down because of their sins. And lots of people would have that impression of God, that God is angry with me. If God knew what I'd done, uh, he, he would be angry with me. Uh, God is an angry God. But it turns out that the Bible is far more nuanced and way more interesting than that. And we're going to explore a little bit about what this uh, phrase, slow to anger, means right now. The Bible and the Old Testament was written in, in Hebrew, the ancient language of Hebrew. And the phrase for slow to anger was originally written uh, with this phrase in Hebrew. It says, Eric Apayam. That's not a random man called Eric. That's a Hebrew phrase, Eric Apayam, which is translated literally as long of nose. But what, you might ask, uh, does God's patience, not getting angry, have to do with a long nose? Well, uh, the common biblical way to say that someone was angry was to say that their nose burnt hot. Their nose burnt hot. So, for example, in the story of Joseph, which is found in Genesis, um, the, the, you know the story, Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, made famous by Jason Donovan. It's found in the book of Genesis. And there's a, the moment in that story where Potiphar thinks that Joseph, the main character, is sleeping with his wife. And it says in the, in the Bible, it says, uh, the literal Hebrew, his nose burnt hot. And it's usually translated as his anger burnt. And it's describing how our bodies and our faces and often our noses get red when we're mad, red when we're angry. So in the Hebrew, the main words for anger are actually to do with nose or heat or literally hot nose. When you are so fueled with rage and fueled with anger that your face and your body reacts to what's going on. A rush of blood to the head maybe. So this is why in the book of Proverbs, someone who is uh, patient is called long of nose. In Proverbs 19.11, it says this, a person's wisdom is their long nose. Or literally, uh, into English, it says, a person's wisdom is their slow anger, because it takes a long time for their nose to get hot. Now, in the Bible, uh, God gets angry numerous times, but God doesn't have a nose and doesn't get hot. So these are sort of metaphors for us to understand anger a bit deeper. But it's, it's using these metaphors to understand how God feels when he witnesses human evil, that it causes a reaction in him, just like it causes a reaction in us with our faces getting red, our noses getting hot. Just like you would get angry maybe if you saw a child being bullied in a playground. So God similarly gets angry when he sees his children, us, oppressing each other and ruining his world and causing evil in this world. And in the Bible, God's Anger is an expression of his justice. That is, he wants us to live well and live right with each other. And his love for the world. But it says he is slow to anger. Which means he is patient. He gives us time to change. And this is how God's uh, anger is consistently displayed throughout the scriptures. And especially in the Old Testament. Over and over again in the, in the Old Testament, the people of God uh, are following God, and then they go their own way. They, they worship God, and then they turn their back on God. And God uh, says, uh, after a little while, God says, if you want to go that way, go. I'm not going to stop you. You just go that way. And for hundreds of years, um, having been rescued from slavery, they, they have this sort of love-hate relationship with God. 
He gives them chances to turn around. Uh, he leads them back into a relationship with him. Then they turn their back on him again. And God, in his anger, just says, do you know what? If you want to go that way, go that way. So God does get angry. It's a response to human evil and disobedience. Our sin is what the Bible calls it. When he sees uh, his creation, us as humans, turn on each other and destroy ourselves or each other. But his anger is slow. It's influenced by the other three characteristics that we see in that passage. His compassion, his grace, and his love, his loyal love. God is compassionate and gracious and loving. He's not content to let us uh, destroy ourselves in self-destruction. So throughout the whole Bible, God is slow to anger, and God is on a mission to rescue us, those he's made. So fast forward then from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The person of Jesus, God uh, made flesh uh, to come and dwell with us, fully God and fully man. And Jesus came to Jerusalem at the end of his life to die on a cross that we have behind me here. A demonstration of God's love for those who have gone away from him, those who've disobeyed him, those who've uh, become sinful. And that's why God's the, the cross is God's display of his anger at what we've done wrong, but also his love for being uh, slow to anger, his gracious, compassionate, and loyal love. He's angry at evil, and yet he's loving towards his people. And it's a perfectly worked out uh, combination of those two things. And when God is angry, he brings justice. He brings justice. It's because he is ultimately a good God. He is a patient God. He's a gracious God. And he's working out his plan to restore the world. I heard this, this quote that said, the cross of Jesus ultimately shows us that God is not cross with us. It shows us his unconditional love for us. So God is slow to anger because he's gracious and it's because he wants the best for his children. He wants us to grow and learn and live alongside each other. And to know and to experience and to reflect his incredible love for us. So, that's God's anger. Let's turn then to us. How do we respond to a God who is slow to anger? Well, I've got a few questions for you about your anger, whether you're someone who'd say, yes, I'm a, a quite an angry person, I get road rage, uh, and I'm, I'm always shouting at the person who doesn't indicate properly, or whether you're someone who, who thinks, do you know what, I'm, I'm probably okay with anger. Um, as I said at the start, anger is a, is a human emotion. There's nothing wrong with getting angry, and we'll hear more about that in a second. It's part of being human. Now, I am um, a bit of a Coldplay fan, unashamedly. Any other Coldplay fans in the house? Yes, come on. Uh, Coldplay released a song recently. Um, you shouldn't have to be embarrassed about being a Coldplay. Yeah. Um, Coldplay are great. Anyway, Coldplay released a song called Human Hearts uh, not long ago. I was really struck by this because I think Coldplay are a sort of, they're, they're prophets for our generation. They sing songs about fatherlessness, about um, uh, immigration, about gun crime. There's, they, they speak into what's going on. And if you look at the lyrics, I was really struck by this song, Human Hearts. It said this, my human heart only got a human heart. I wish it didn't run away. I wish it didn't fall apart. Oh, my human heart, night and day, light and dark, any day it could be torn in half, only got a human heart. And if you're someone who gets angry quickly or angry regularly, perhaps you'd echo uh, that, those words in your heart and in your anger. I wish I didn't, it didn't run away. I wish my heart didn't run away with itself. I wish my heart didn't fall apart every time that situation happened with that person and I felt the, the anger rise in me. But I wonder tonight, in moments of your anger, whether you ever pray about your anger. Do you ever bring it to God? Do you ever say, God, I need help with this. I need to know uh, your presence in this. I need to know your truth and your light in moments of anger. Because I think we can often view anger and the emotion of anger as, as like a sinful thing that God wouldn't be pleased with. 
And then we can view it as uh, like something that God would be um, disapproving of within us. But our anger isn't the problem. It's what we do with our anger that determines whether or not we sin about it or sin from it. Ephesians 4, 26 says this, be angry, but do not sin. And perhaps there are things in your world, in your life right now, maybe small things, maybe large things that get you riled, that get you wound up. I asked my wife what, um, and this is a sort of like a, a question I asked her last night, what, what gets you really annoyed about me? What makes you angry about me at home? And um, believe it or not, there wasn't very much, um, but <laughs> no, that's not true. She said, she said this, the, the, the sort of spontaneous thing she said, it's like, when the house is clean, when I've spent time hoovering or something or, or clean the bathroom, the house is clean, you always seem to cut your nails and leave your nails all over the carpet, all over the floor. Now, I'm not sure if that's true, but you know, that is for her, what she said makes her furious with me. Sorry, Nay. No. I'll try to cut my nails some other place. Um, <laughs> Anyway, whether, you're, whether the things that uh, make you angry are small or whether they are large, perhaps, um, perhaps there are big things in your life, significant things in your life. Maybe it's uh, a friend or a family member, someone close to you, a boss or a colleague, that just uh, where, you, where you see them or speak to them or interact with them, anger rises in you. Maybe it's a situation out of your control that you just feel angry about, something that's affecting you. In our human anger, with our human heart, we can pray. We can bring those emotions, that feeling, that response, whether it's sort of involuntary or whatever, you can, we can bring that to God in prayer. You can bring yourself to God and say, God, you know these feelings. I want to be honest with you in prayer and say, God, would you take my human heart? I wish it didn't run away. I wish it didn't fall apart. I want to know your peace and your patience. Because the Bible promises us peace beyond all understanding. And the gift of patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit that we can pray for from the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we uh, can't face these situations by ourselves. And what we do is we come to God and we say, God, I need to know your peace and I need to know the gift of patience. And every time when we come together uh, to meet, we as a community want to be honest and open with each other and honest and open before God as well. And we will have a chance to pray tonight for you. If you'd love to receive that gift of peace, if you'd love to receive that gift of patience, to say, God, you know my human heart. You know uh, its fragility. You know uh, what gets me angry. You know uh, something that I'm angry about on behalf of someone. Uh, we can come to God tonight in prayer. And I would encourage you not to miss uh, that chance tonight to receive peace and to receive patience. The theologian Oswald J. Smith says this, the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. I think that's so true that it starts with what's going on inside of us. So finally, if we look at the person of Jesus in the New Testament, we can be reassured in all of this that uh, anger is a human emotion because Jesus experienced anger. So angry that he shouted at people, authorities above him, so angry that he went into the temple and turned tables over. He rebuked those in authority. And Jesus had something that we call righteous anger. Righteous anger is being angry at situations that aren't the way that God intended or designed them to be. So Jesus' anger was uh, towards those in religious authority, those who um, uh, essentially... Uh, well, he got mad at many things. Let's go through a few of them. Uh, essentially, uh, the religious authorities that kept people outside of the temple, those who were disabled, those who were uh, outcast of society, who weren't welcome into the place of worship. Jesus got mad at the human condition, seeing those in poverty and suffering, those uh, who had suffered uh, for many, many, many years, as physically, mentally. He got angry at kids being overlooked as the lowest in society, not being welcome to come to him. He got angry at barriers, uh, whether it be uh, financial or social, different statuses, not being um, allowed to approach him even. Jesus wanted 
all people to have the opportunity to know his love. And when that opportunity was squashed or stopped by a rule or by a religious ruler, he got really mad. But interestingly, though, he rarely got mad about injustices done to him. Jesus was often treated badly by uh, many of these people. He was often uh, rebuked and cursed and told to get out of a city, not welcomed in a different place. But rarely do we see his anger in a response to something that had happened to him. I don't know about you, but I'm not like that. When I get angry, it's because something's done, someone's done something wrong to me. Someone's hurt me. Someone's accused me of something, like not having barbecue tools or other things that are more serious. Um, but Jesus, his anger is at seeing how other people are treated, seeing the injustice of what's going on around him, the suffering, the poverty. And his anger is righteous anger because he saw things that weren't the way that God had intended them. And maybe you're in a place tonight where, where you don't quite feel that. For, for you, the anger is about how you've been treated. And that is totally fine. We have valid reasons uh, for being angry. But we can bottle up our anger. We can respond uh, sort of in, in instantaneously, quickly, without thinking about it, rashly. And we follow a God who is slow to anger. So when you get angry, try praying. Try saying to God, God, you know these emotions. You know what's going on in my life. But maybe tonight you're here and you have a sense of righteous anger. Maybe that sense of, of what Jesus saw with uh, people who are oppressed or suffering or on the outcast of society, that for you in your own life, as you walk around the city, as you interact with people, as you see uh, suffering and poverty and injustice, exploitation around the city of Bristol, that gets you angry. That gets you mad. That is something to pray about too. To say, God, I, I don't know what to do with this. I, I've just seen this person and I, I'm mad that they're in this situation. The other night I was watching um, the BBC series Ambulance. I don't know if you guys have seen that. It's, it follows um, paramedic Teams uh, it's um, had many, many series, and at the moment it's following uh, ambulance services in the northeast. And they and I were watching it the other night, and there was um, a couple who an ambulance team went to. And um, this couple were quite elderly. Uh, they both had learning disability, and they had four years ago lost one of their children in a tragic accident. And this, um, the, 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 the series follows the paramedics into this house where they've been called by a social worker to respond to this situation. And we watched, they and I watched this, watched this clip. And it was um, essentially the social worker said, this, the, the, this guy who had suffered uh, bereavement for a loss of a child had not been out of bed for four years. Not been out of bed for four years. And essentially the social worker was uh, reporting the fact that they had been uh, dropped from the, from the social care system. They'd been dropped by uh, the benefit system. And they'd essentially sort of lived in this uh, house on their own with little support, with no government support, with no um, social service support for four years. And they'd fallen out of the system. They'd lost uh, all contact with those who could help them. And we, you watched as these paramedics sort of treated this guy who'd not managed to eat or drink for three days. And they and I just watched this. And you could see the paramedic welling up and, and responding because he just saw the brokenness, the injustice, the, uh, the, 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 the human need of these two people. And it got Nay and I thinking, gosh, this is going on in our country. This, the paramedic was moved to tears and had to take time out to say, I, I couldn't believe the situation this was in. And it made me angry that people could live in this situation in 2022 in this country. And maybe there's something in you that gets you angry. Righteous anger at injustice. Righteous anger at uh, whatever it is. Oppression of young people in this uh, city. Exploitation of those. Pay attention to your righteous anger. What gets you riled? Bring it to God and say, God, what do you want me to do with this? How can I respond to this? So those are my things tonight.
your anger, if it's uh, something that you need to pray for peace for, pray for patience for, or maybe there's a righteous anger in you tonight, a righteous anger uh, to do with um, something that's going on in the city. My prayer is that we would learn and get to know the God who is slow to anger, but rich in love and grace and compassion, that he is angry with evil and injustice, but he doesn't stop there. He goes out of his way to show love, to show acceptance, to show grace, and to show compassion. So may we be people who know that, who live it out, who experience it in our lives, and show a world that God is slow to anger and abounding in love, which we'll hear about next week for part four.